Here's another one that's found in the books still today. It's called uh, ne Neanderthal Man because it was found in Neander Valley in Germany. It was named that because of a Christian guy who lived there. It was named after him called Joachim Neander. Joachim Neander was a Christian who actually composed some Christian songs we sing today in our churches. And the song here is, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him, for he is thy health and salvation. Do you sing that here, Andrew? Is that sung here? That's where it comes from. Satan doesn't like that, you see. So he had to go in there and cause some damage in the place where um, Joachim Neander lived. This is the valley it was found in. This is where they found some bones. In the same valley, they also found some human bones, by the way. Now, the reason they said that this is um, halfway man and halfway uh, ape is because his bent, back was bent over a little bit, okay? And um, it, it, not I mean, it wasn't a missing link. It was just had a back that was bent over. So 50 years ago, they found out that it was bent over like that because of arthritis. The guy was diseased, he had an illness, it was bent over because of arthritis or rickets. He wasn't part human or, and part ape. A doctor called Cuozzo spent a couple of decades of his life examining this very fossil, and this is what he's actually written about it. He said, you must understand that this skull really cries out disease. The teeth are badly decayed, and the bones of the vault of the skull are extremely thick. There are many features that testify of acromegaly, which is a chronic disease that causes uh, enlargement of bones, or excess secretion of growth hormone in adulthood. Neanderthal man was just fully human. That was sick. That's all it was. If you limit, yet it's, it's still in our textbooks today. It's still in the British Museum today and still used as proof of evolution. It makes you laugh. It really does. Just purely deformed body. That's all it was. It was it's a hope grasshopper hope situation. It turned out that the evolutionists are so desperate to find some proof, they use Neanderthal as a proof. Some key people, listen to this, some key people even today are lying about this. And, and I, this is what I need you to pay attention to now. Look at this. It's a news article that appeared on the 19th of February 2005 in The Guardian about a professor who for 30 years, listen to this, deliberately falsified all the skull dates to fit the theory. This professor, you wouldn't think this would happen these days, would you? This, uh, this professor named Reiner Proch von Zieten, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. If not, I apologize. It's just, um, this is just some part of his report. And please, if you want to see the full report, I can send you an email. Um, you can ask me later. I'll email it to you or we'll put it perhaps on the website. I'll give you a link. The link is right up there at the top. I'm going to show you basically just, a, I'm going to read through a snippet of what this guy has done. All right? This appeared on the 19th of February, 2005. Yesterday, his university in Frankfurt announced the professor had been forced to retire because of numerous falsehoods and manipulations. According to experts, his deception, uh, deceptions may mean an entire trench of the history of man's development will have to be rewritten. Anthropology is going to have to completely revise its pictures of modern men say Thomas Turber, the archaeologist who discovered the hoax. Professor Proch's work appeared to prove that ana anatomically, modern humans and Neander Neanderthals had coexisted and perhaps even had children together. This now appears to be rubbish. The scandal only came to light when Professor Proch's, Proch was caught trying to sell his entire department's entire chimpanzee skull collection to the United States. In an inquiry later established that he had also passed off fake fossils as real ones and plagiarized other scientists' work. His university inquiry was told that a crucial Hamburg skull frag fragment, which was be uh, believed to have come from the world's oldest German, a Neanderthal known as Hanhofer Sandman, was actually a mere 7,500 years old, according to Oxford University's radiocarbon dating unit. The unit established that other skull had been wrongly dated too. This is all recent stuff. Another um, another of the professor's sensational finds, that's Binshoff Spire woman, lived 1,300 BC and not 21,300 years ago, as he had claimed. While Paterborn Sandal Man, he was dated 27,400, only died a couple of hundred years ago in 1750. He made those dates up. It's an embarrassment. This is recent. Professor Aldrich Brandt, who led the investigation into Professor Broch's activity, said yesterday, Professor Broch refused to meet us, but 
We had 10 sit, uh, sittings with 12 witnesses. Their stories about him were increasingly bizarre. After a while, it was hard to take it seriously. You had to laugh. It was just unbelievable. At the end of the day, what he did was incredible. In one case, he had claimed that a 50 million year old half ape called Atopis had been found in Switzerland, an archaeological sensation. In reality, the ape had been dug up in France, where several other examples had already been found. It was just a recent ape. It was a lie. So you would think something happened in the past wouldn't happen today. Yet despite that, despite having no evidence, why does it still appear in the British Museum, which says this? It says, there is now evidence that an early form of modern humans had evolved in Africa by about 100,000 years ago. They may have had, they ha may have been our ancestors. They may have been our ancestors. There's your scientific proof. They may have been. That's what it is. That's, 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 that's we're dealing with science here. This is ridiculous. We get that all the time. May have been. May have been, probably. Here's another one. Look at it on the left side here. Look at the statement on the left says, they were probably the first people to bury their dead. Oh, there probably were they. Oh, there you go. What, proof? what more proof do you want? Probably that's what they did.